So the phone rings at Glendale one day, and it's Coach Funauer. And he's in St. Louis, and he says, hey, left-hander, I got to tell you this. Jack Buck just called me, and I got to tell you this. And I said, okay, Coach. And he says, there's two guys walking their dogs in Central Park. One's got a German Shepherd, and one's got a Chihuahua. One guy says to the other, are you hungry? And he goes, yeah, I'm kind of hungry. He says, well, let's get something to eat at Tavern on the Green. The guy says, well, they're not going to let us in. They don't allow pets. The guy says, I've got an idea. So the guy with the German Shepherd walks up. Mater D says, may I help you? And the guy says, yeah, I'd like to be seated. He said, I'm sorry, sir, we don't allow pets. He said, it's a seeing eye dog. He said, sir, I'm so sorry. Please come in. Comes back, and there's the guy there with the chihuahua. He says, uh, can I help you? And the guy says, yeah, I'd like to be seated. He said, sir, we don't allow pets. He said, well, it's a seeing eye dog. Mater D said, sir, really? A chihuahua for a seeing eye dog? And the guy said, they gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> <laughs> always good to mention Coach Spooner at any time, but uh, I, I got, got very lucky. This is a special night um, to be with this group, to be in this induction class is um, a personal highlight. Um, it's very humbling and I'm very proud. And um, I've always thought this event was a celebration of Springfield. Uh, which means you have to give um, Bonus Frost an awful lot of credit. Uh, this is, uh, uh, it's, it's good to have something for a while, but when something lasts this long, and it's as good as it is, and as good as it's been, and uh, that, that's really special. And his vision uh, is still hold true, still holds true today. Uh, and I wanna thank the Board of Directors for their uh, involvement in the Hall of Fame process as well. Um, Ceremonies like this uh, cover, I think, the two best aspects of our lives, memories and relationships. And um, I, uh, I am privileged to have uh, a number of those uh, with some wonderful people along the way, and many of you are in this room. So, um, I have always needed a team. I've always needed a team. Um, Little known fact, I left high school, I had three school records in track, they were all relays. I needed three other people, really good coaching, Jim Vaughn. Four years later, national runner up at SMS, all senior group came off the bench, no one over 6'4", platoon basketball. Press, make or miss, full court, all the time. Good enough and fun enough to get a nickname, Chinese Bandits. One MIAA coach that year asked if he could vote us on the all-conference team. And that's how much fun we had while we were on our way to a national championship. Again, I needed four people and some really good coaching, Bill Thomas. But tonight is really about the Hillcrest Merchants and the Glendale Falcons. Hillcrest Merchants baseball, Glendale Falcon basketball. And that's what that's really about. And there are so many similarities, um, and I want to share some of those with you because um, I had a lot of things in common, and, uh, which is why I get to be here tonight. Uh, both cases, I followed Hall of Fame coaches. At age 23, I followed Dick Birmingham at Hillcrest, who would eventually be inducted into 11 Halls of Fame. Good luck with that, Mike. <laughs> at age 29, I followed Jack Roberts at Glendale, who is also inducted into multiple Halls of Fame. Good luck with that one, Mike. But I had great parents both places. Parents that never said, what do you need? They said, what do you want? What do you want us to do? And almost without exception, 
they wanted all the kids to excel as well as their own son. Now that's special. I had great players who had enviable work ethics. They came early, they stayed late, and they embraced what I think are the two most important words in sport and my two favorite words in sport, and that is compete and trust. Compete that you will compete at the highest level possible and trust that you'll bring your best every time and you trust that your opponent does the same. Now, Coach Green and I have had this discussion. I think we had that bond while we were competing against each other. And we trusted that they brought their best and they trusted that we did as well. We had an official that was in the Ozark Conference who was good enough to also call some college basketball. And his first college game was at Chicago, Illinois Circle. It was an AMQ8 game. It wasn't a league game, but he got to call the game. And the supervisor officials came up to him afterwards and said, congratulations. Now there were 165 people there at the, at the pavilion. And Art and I were sharing this story earlier and Art said, well, that was a big crowd for there. When, when the Bears would play, you know, Chicago Circle, they're, they're, you know, one night he said he counted 83. So there's 165 there and the supervisor officials walks in and says, hey, congratulations, your first D1 game, you've reached the big time. This official looked at him and he said, I called a game last night in Springfield in front of 3,200 people, double overtime, Kickapoo and Glendale. Now that's the big time. <laughs> and that game later had 6,000 people in attendance. Uh, so the great players, and they wanted to compete, and they trusted that uh, they would bring it, and, and I trust them they would bring it, and. And they, uh, hopefully our opponent would do the same thing. I had great co-coaches. I never referred to them as assistants. Um, Hillcrest Baseball Legion, Jim Vaughn won 15 straight JV championships. So player development wasn't a problem, okay? Uh, Don Eisminger was a longtime varsity assistant, but co-coach for me. And he was part of four state championships, two runner-ups, and if common sense were water, he's an ocean. I had Greg Harding at Glendale, as bright a young mind as there was, particularly on game night, and I got Bill in the deal. It's kind of nice to have. Larry Atwood lived down the street, and he would drop in, practice, and uh, wasn't a bit afraid to tell us how we needed to get better. I got the occasional note from Brownie Smith with advice, which we always took. And of course, Donnie Carlson, who's as genuine a person as any of us will ever know. And I think about him every day. He wouldn't let you have a bad day. He wouldn't let you have a bad day. And every day he'd come into practice, he'd clap his hands, he'd say, Coach, we got a chance to get better today. What are you going to do? Let's go. And uh, always followed his lead. Every coach on the staff we had at Glendale, this is how good it was for me. Every coach we had on the staff, student coaches, freshman coaches, JV coaches, everybody we had eventually became either a head coach, a college assistant, or an administrator. That's how fortunate I was, and that's how good I had it. And that's over 15 years. More similarities. Um, Probably the thing maybe I'm most proud of that I was so proud of our players was we won the Eddie Matthews Sportsmanship Award three times. We tied for it three other times. Um, no Springfield School ever won it. Uh, it wasn't a goal. It wasn't something we set out at the beginning of the year. But it was so meaningful uh, because of Coach Matthews and how he had been and what he had done for Southwest Missouri basketball. 79 Hillcrest Legion Merchants were the first team to win the Bartlesville Holiday Tournament Sportsmanship Award. 
They'd never given one before. And the year they gave it, we got it first. Not a goal, just something that happened that was rewarding and worthwhile. I had 56 seniors at Glendale. They all graduated from, they all got college degrees, 56 of them. Everyone got a college degree. Now, before you say that they're all really smart and everything like that, I got to tell you, uh, one year we, uh, I kind of went in the beginning of the year and I said, guys, uh, you're like wide earth. Everybody's going to come looking for you. I mean, you know, they're going to come in here and try to beat you. You're like wide earth. They're going to come looking for you and went all year long with a wide earth deal. And we're going to Joplin late in the year and I hear a book slam in the back and I hear kids start laughing. And, I turned around and motioned for someone to come up, and I said, what's going on? And they said, well, I said, Coach, we've got the Converse NCAA yearbook out. It's about this thing. It's got all the history of the NCAA on it. And we got the history of the NBA, and it's about that thick. And, Coach, we can't find where Wyatt Earp played. <laughs> I said, go on back, sit down. Told Coach Carlson we probably ought to throw out those new out-of-bounds plays. I didn't think they were going to work <laughs> that night. All 13 starters on that 79 merchant team received college scholarships. And of those 56 seniors at Glendale, 32 of them received athletic scholarship offers. And finally, both programs were nationally ranked at one time or another. 79 team was nationally ranked. The 99 team at Glendale uh, was nationally ranked. And Kind of like Stu just said, by the way, Stu, you can come up and finish this any time you want because uh, you were great. But um, what Stu just said was, uh, you know, to be from here and to do great things here is, is well, this is home. And um, it, it's just a, a neat thing to have happen. Um, now I want to share with you the team that's most responsible for me being here. And that's the one where I'm Pat and Wayne's son, and I'm Shailene Connor's dad, and I'm Knox and Benton's grandpa, and I'm Leah's brother, and I'm Drew's father-in-law, and now I'm Bev's fiance. <laughs> you clap, that's okay. My parents are the most generous people I've ever known. And I was the first beneficiary of that with their wisdom and their time and their encouragement and support. Uh, my dad's the best coach I've ever seen. Uh, coach Spoon and I told me one time his Morrisville team's played harder than anybody ever seen. Now that says something, because I think, well, it just says something. Uh, my mom was there every step of the way, side by side, doing whatever needed to be done. And the wisdom's still there, the time's still there, the encouragement, the support's still there. He's still there, she's still there, and I can't thank you enough. Um, Jalen and Connor, uh, they make me proud every day in every way. Knox and Benton, Knox 22 months old. He's already making goals. <laughs> Benton's a month old. As soon as she can get a golf club in her hand, she will. I'm thinking scholarship, <laughs> okay? Leah, all those games you got you got dragged to. Uh, it's a wonder you still like sports, but I know, I know you do. And uh, Bev, the first um, first paragraph in our first conversation, you mentioned family, faith, the basketball, the Bears, and the Cardinals. And then I said, just saying, there's a chance. <laughs> just saying. But I've been so blessed and thankful to get to have done what I wanted to do in life, where I wanted to do it, with who I wanted to do it with, and for who I wanted to do it for. And I want to thank you all for coming, and this is so special. Thank you.